This meditation is about neuroplasticity. This is a powerful meditation with a little bit of information for you as well. It's important to take inventory of our thoughts, our behaviors, our feelings. Just taking time to get comfortable and thinking of all of these things, our feelings, our actions, our thoughts, and just noticing if they are really serving us. And if they're not, know that we have the capability to choose different thoughts. And by choosing different thoughts, we can help create new feelings and thus new actions. Our brain has the amazing ability to change. We have the ability to change. We have the ability to change our habits, our behaviors at any time. Neural pathways form from repeated patterns and behaviors. And the more we practice those habits and behaviors, the stronger and more automatic the neural pathways become. Dr. Shona Shapiro is the author of a wonderful book, and I highly recommend it, called Good Morning, I Love You. And she compares our neural pathways to really well-built super highways in our brains. And you know, this analogy makes me think of smooth roads, very well-traveled, cruise control, you know, an example of a not so good neural pathway could be a reaction, like quickly becoming angry or an automatic behavior, like negative self-talk. And if you think about walking, drinking water, brushing your teeth, there are certain pathways that take care of those tasks and they've been strengthened over time to the point where those actions feel completely automatic. And you can do these things because of these neural pathways and that have been formed from repeated behavior and practice over time. So we can change these things that no longer serve us. Just remember to be gentle with yourself and approach creating these habits with curiosity and kindness. Remember progress, not perfection. Be kind to yourself. You can't shame yourself into transformation. Shame literally shuts off the learning centers in our brains. So if at any point during this meditation you feel triggered, just remember to take a deep breath, come back to your hands and your feet, and ground into the earth. Ground through your feet, your hands. You can walk around if you need to, drink some water, or you can stop the practice at any time. And we'll come to the practice. Begin by bringing your attention to the breath. A longer out breath will have a calming effect on your nervous system. So for me, I like to breathe in for a count of four or five and breathe out for five or six. And see if you can notice the breath down in the belly.
And be aware that as you reduce your heart rate, your heart, uh, <laughs> as you reduce your heart rate with this long out breath, you are affecting three key parts of your brain. You are affecting the amygdala, which is a small part of the brain that is involved in fight or flight. And when we practice mindfulness for 27 minutes a day, studies show that over an eight week period, we will see a significant reduction in the activity and size of the amygdala. When we are in constant states of stress, our amygdala goes all crazy. <laughs> it gets bigger and more active. So really now practice and be fully present, especially on that out breath. Breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. Reducing cortisol in the bloodstream as you induce the relaxation response. Reducing size and activity of the amygdala. And see if you can create softness in the belly. When you do this, you actually increase oxytocin, improving vagal tone, which is the health of your nervous system. Relax the eyes. The amygdala is the part of the brain that detects danger and activates our fight or flight. It's our alarm system. So by doing this practice, we are training ourselves to know that we are okay. We are safe. We are actively retraining the nervous system Feeling into the body and breath. And just allowing yourself to be in the experience. And moving to a different part of the brain now, the hippocampus. This has the potential to store memories. When we've been in a traumatic event or if we have PTSD, our memories can become fragmented. And sometimes we can't really recall the state of events or sometimes we can recall a memory and it comes back frequently. But as we practice, we actually increase the activity and size of the hippocampus in trauma survivors the hippocampus size and activity is decreased 
So we are trying to build up the hippocampus, creating neurogenesis, creating new neural pathways. Meditation is a wonderful tool to increase hippocampal volume in the brain, allowing for new memories and new experiences. Many of us are stuck in a state of overwhelm and it, it seems like we can't process any more information and that's why this practice is so profound, because our nervous system is in a constant state of overwhelm. It, it's constantly overstimulated. So know that as you keep coming back to your breath and your body, you are improving your memory and your recall and our memories become more anchored in the present moment and in truth rather than fragments so really focus on your hands now the sensation and temperature And if you're feeling triggered, this is actually a good time to gently tap your hand. This is an exercise by Peter Levine. So you're just somatically experiencing the body. You can also wiggle your toes. And then come mindfully again to the face. And see if you can smile to stimulate the vagus nerve. This helps develop good vagal tone. And we are moving mindfully and attentively into the body by using all these different experiences to guide us in. The gentle half smile. And we are going to move now to the prefrontal cortex, which is our emotional regulator. And this also helps us with concentration and focused attention. With PTSD and dissociation, our attention can be scattered. Our concentration can be poor and our emotional regulation can be affected. And these are also things people with ADHD experience. So this is very helpful for that as well. To build up the prefrontal cortex. We work on focused attention with mindfulness meditation. So again, I invite you to come back to the breath and be fully present in that. And just bringing your awareness to the crown of the head and try to relax 
all the muscles in your scalp. Coming to your forehead and relaxing the brow. All the little muscles around the eyes. See if you can allow your eyes to relax so much that they seem to sort of sit back into the skull. The way we breathe affects the state of our nervous system, so be mindful of the breath. Now moving gently into the muscles that orbit the mouth, relaxing the mouth completely, broadening the tongue, relaxing the jaw. but keeping the mouth closed and breathing through the nose. And if you like, you can hum here to help release the vocal folds. And this is good because it also extends your out breath naturally, which will calm you further. bringing your attention into the heart space. See if you can soften here and bring that same softness into the belly. Wishing yourself happiness. Letting your awareness slowly travel up the spine. When we've held anxiety and fear patterns for a long time, we tend to hold a lot of tension here. So inducing the parasympathetic nervous system response, really moving into your spine, your back softly, and compassionately. The blood flow through the limbs when we've had trauma can be sort of cut off. So draw your attention and mindfully move your awareness down the limbs. Moving slowly from shoulder to elbow to wrist into the fingers, the palms, when we've experienced stress, the blood leaves these areas to protect our internal organs. So we can tend to have cold hands and feet. Or sometimes we can even feel overheated. So really envision that blood and lymph flowing down each finger. And then running all the way back up, elbow, shoulder, moving down through the glutes, the knees, the shins, the calves, the feet, and to each toe. Increasing prana flow, blood and lymph.
and bringing your attention back to softness of belly and heart. Releasing any tension. Breathing deeply into these places. All of these places that have served you your entire life. Wishing every part of you love and healing. And when you're ready, you can slowly wiggle your fingers, your toes, and stretch. So this was just a short meditation with a little bit of information for you because I personally really love to hear why these methods work. It makes it so much more powerful knowing what's really happening. It's not just, you know, foo-foo, it's, you know, neuroscience that's really doing something. And you can bring your head forward and stretch out the back of your neck, maybe slowly move it from side to side. And the back. Each side and just gently So I am in the process of creating an e-course that will have exercises like this, but they will be more in depth. Um, and there will also be expressive arts exercises that I will guide you through. Um, uh, uh, more information, more in depth information on trauma healing and the nervous system, inner child work, there will be journaling. So it's going to be, I'm thinking I'm going to make it like a seven day intensive and you can do it at your own pace, but it's going to be a lot of practices to help you figure out who you really are, what are the patterns that you need to change and how to change them. And it's gentle, so it's, it's nothing to fear. It's, you know, it's safe to do this sort of digging, even at home by yourself. But obviously I'm always here. Anybody can reach out at any time. Or obviously, you know, if you have a therapist or somebody you like to, you know, feel comfortable speaking with, but these are just little exercises to give that subconscious mind some sort of outlet and a way to express and dive a bit deeper into these contents of your being, these things that make up your innate rhythm. So I hope you enjoyed this. Much love to all of you. And my name is Sean Kathleen. I am the creative director of Spirit Echo Healing. I myself have struggled with mental health my whole life. I have trauma that I am still recovering from and unearthing. Um, I have derealization disorder, ADHD, 
I have battled with addiction. I'm in recovery. So these things are very, very important to me. And in my journey, it has been very difficult for me to find help and for me to, you know, a, a big part of my growth was learning about this. So that is what I want to try to give to people. And, you know, this is in no way supposed to replace any sort of therapy or medication or whatever does work for you. This is something that can be added on to enhance your personal healing process. <sighs> So when this video is over, you can do this again. You know, this meditation, you can do it slower by yourself. Just scanning the body, bringing awareness to each part. Go as slow as you like. The slower, the better. If you go, you know, one finger at a time, one muscle at a time, the better it'll be. All right. Much love. And for more information, if, if this is something that interests you and if this helps you, um, I have a blog where I post a ton of information on a lot of things related to this and uh, obviously my e-courses. And yeah, so thank you for watching.